Korea. Good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl. <laughs> it's our first pheasant. <laughs> Go get it, girl. Good girl. Good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl. That's a good girl. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Good girl. Good girl, good girl, yes you are, good girl, oh yes you're a good girl, good girl. Puppy. So out here today, and what do we got here, Trigger? What's this? Huh? What's that? What's that? Good girl. Trigger's first pheasant. That's a good girl. Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, nice looking bird, huh? Not too bad. Okay, you guys go. Guys go. Look back. Look back in there. Look back in there. Look back in there. Look back. I guess when you, the whole, one of the big things about hunting, of course, is uh, the appreciation of, of, your, of your game that you're hunting. So you know, you need to have that, um, 
you don't really know until you go out hunting, do you? I mean, you don't really, and, and when you actually get to handle the bird, you know, in your hands and see how beautiful they are. So, you know, it's just a, a huge appreciation that I think you know, isn't expressed a lot, but uh, I know every hunter appreciates uh, their prey. Um, I sure do, they're beautiful. And, uh, of course, being out hunting with your dog our first year, you know, it's all, it's all an appreciation, uh, mainly for me out here. Um, because that's where I wanted to, you know, I, I definitely appreciate all the bushcraft stuff, and I wanted to appreciate it more, so I've been doing some reading. Um, basically, it kind of explores, um, you know, in the 1800s, they seem to have had to deal with a lot that the bushcraft guys trying to emulate. I think before, you know, before that you definitely have the primitive, the primitive age, uh, you know, primitive, um, you know, where you're just going out and, and uh, you know, making your own arrowheads and all that. But bushcraft I think is a little bit, up, you know, a little more modern than that. Um, but we need to understand what, you know, or have someone that we can pattern ourselves after. Um, so, you know, I've been definitely uh, reading but the, the Kephart, Sears, um, and John Muir is uh, somebody that I've just, is really, you know, at first I, I wondered how he could do it. You know, we, we have uh, roads even. We didn't really have any roads going through Yosemite. We have it so easy. And, um, and that guy, John Muir, you know, he, just, he definitely wasn't as tough and as gruff as the other guys um, that were out there that were more, I'm going out to hunt and trap. Um, John Muir was just going out to, to document nature. And you know, we, we can hunt, but we can hunt like those other guys did. So, you know, we need to um, kind of do that same, same effect of, of going out in nature, not necessarily for the hunt, but for, um, you know, the appreciation of nature and seeing what it's all about. I don't have internet connection here, but a lot of John Muir's writings are just incredible. I actually had to lug my own wood out here because this is kind of a flood zone area and so all the dry wood um, basically is taken away. But, um, you know, I'll try and get John Muir for my next so I can read some of the stuff that he wrote. I mean, that, I, the guy was just an incredible writer. And the way he described waterfalls or valleys or, or the trees and all that, I'll, I'll, I'll get downloaded so I can, I can bring it. But it's just fantastic. So definitely uh, the more I learned, though, about the bushcraft and what he had to go through or what he took for food or what he actually had, I mean, he didn't have a bushcraft knife, or none of those guys had a bushcraft knife. Um, none of them had um, stoves or you know, sleep systems from the army or you know, any of those things. So, but but they made it, and they, and they did it. So that's what I'm trying. I'm trying. I don't want to. I don't want to be a reenactor. Um, by any means, I've got really cool equipment. And I like to go and do that. But when I do go out bushcrafting, I want to try and do it. You know. I guess to fit it into my life, so uh, it seems practical for me. But I definitely, at the end of the day, I can just go home and turn on the furnace. And, uh, that's that's okay. This is the time we live in, and all of all my hiking equipment all stems from what happened way back when. So there's really nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's just it was just the progression of equipment and knowledge and. And preservation of nature too. I mean, there's a lot. You know, we just can't go out hunting. This is hunting season right now. So yeah, I can go hunting, but we can't. We can't hunt all around. We can't um, necessarily snare up where I live. So. So, you know, it's just. Uh, Real nice to get out 
I truly appreciate where I am. I truly appreciate, you know, I'm, I'm looking out at the river. I've got a fire on the riverbank. I'm hunting with my dog. We're hunting pheasant. I mean, there's just so much appreciation. Um, there's nothing angry about it. I mean, it, I don't see, um, you know, doing, doing YouTube videos, how could you ever have one that where you're angry? I, mean, I can, I can see, uh, you know, preppers or mainly preppers being angry that you don't have the right equipment, uh, or angry that you're, you know, you have to know, know these things. And, and uh, fortunately, I don't want to be angry out here. I want to be enjoying myself, and I think that's, you know, that's what bushcraft really is. It's a lot of trying to make it so you're enjoying yourself. And to enjoy it, you got to appreciate it. And uh, you know, that's that's where I'm heading. So. Don't know how much more I'll get. Hopefully, some winter winds in. But, uh, my water is more than yet. Bit teapot. Oh, yeah. I think another another thing I need to work on, it's I guess not really bothering me, but you know, I need to know I need to know I guess what it's like to do like right now I'm learning what it's like to cook without a cook you know, without a stove and and uh, you know I've got a wool blanket and a tarp set up tarps and all that kind of stuff but I've never slept overnight in a wool blanket so I think that is going to be my next thing I mean I if there's one thing and there's enough seems like there's enough gear videos or there's enough uh, you know or, or taking you know, or just showing off a piece of gear I think you really you know either either use it in a real-life situation you know that's more interesting I think it's always nice to see the equipment, but you, you know, actually see it in use. I mean, the, even even right down to knives and saws. You know, you got to see them in use. You just can't. You know, I can't just sit there and do those things. I, mean, I guess you can. I mean, it's good for practice. It's good for for uh, you know getting used to being on the camera and all that. But you know, if I'm going to talk bushcraft, I think I need to know what it's like to actually sleep under a tarp in weather in a wool blanket situation. So, yeah, until I do that, I don't think I'm gonna, not that that is necessarily bushcraft. It's like, uh, you have to at least go to that extent. Because anything beyond that is just kind of modern camping or modern, it's modern. I mean, if you're gonna use a modern sleeping bag, it's not really necessarily bushcraft, it's just in a sleeping bag with a tarp. So I think you have to at least know what sleeping in a wool blanket is like. And I'll do it. I, I think that's what I'll do the next thing. Wow, that'll be, that'll be interesting. <laughs> so that'll be my next goal, I guess, in all this. Um, so I think I really need to understand that. I don't know if I'll ever get to snare anything. Um, I know how to clean animals. But the things I don't know are how to, I guess, do uh, shelter that's comfortable 
uh, it's like 1860s style. But I, you know, I'm not going to do a, a cotton tarp. I don't see the point. But uh, I think being under a tarp on the ground, I don't like it. That's my next goal.